Hey everybody, Andrew here from Pacific Coast Auto, taking a look at the results of last week's auction picks. Up first, the Subaru Vivio. This one got bid up over Derek's guess, all the way to 2860, but the seller still wouldn't let it go. The Mitsubishi Jeep did sell. Somebody picked that up for 1490 The Lancer Evo 3 was another case of a car getting removed from auction. This one got bid up to 9140 and then for some reason the seller pulled it. Wish we knew why. The Pacific Coast Auto Company car lookalike, BB Open Deck, did sell, and it went for $1,350. The Suzuki Jimny also sold, and that one went for an even $4,000. Nobody wanted the old Honda Prelude. That one was unsold with no bids. And finally, the Honda S660 Alpha did sell. Somebody took that home for $13,060. That's going to do it for last week's picks. Now here's Derek with this week's. Hey guys, it's Derek here now, and we're going to go through 14 picks this 13. week. 13 picks this week and not 14. Uh, we have more than usual because they were a little bit hard to narrow down. Keep in mind we're only going to be showing one pick from each person. I know a lot of people picked a lot of things and here's something that I didn't realize until this week is that this is kind of two bits of awesomeness this video series because not only can you watch these uh, videos on YouTube but it turns out that the comments and everything on Facebook is becoming its own little fun thing to do and so if you want to see all the picks I think there was like 57 picks in total this week then you can go to the Facebooks and you can see uh, all of those quite interesting to see a lot of the cars that don't make it onto the YouTube I try to pick the ones that I think are going to be the most appreciated by the widest widest group of people but that means that some of the weirder cars that I myself personally like might not make it onto here so there is that uh, also one of the question what, this one's going to be a bit of a longer one, and so I'd like to hear in the comments what you think about the longer ones, or if you want them to be shorter. I myself prefer videos that are in the range of like 10 to 20 minutes on YouTube, because I don't really have a lot of time to be spending, but I know some people prefer the longer ones, and so if you can give me an idea about uh, which ones that you like, or if it's a longer one, would you click on it, not click on it? I guess the, the data is going to be a little bit skewed, because this is a longer video, and then more likely it's going to be uh, clicked on by people who like the longer videos. Okay, so that being said, we'll jump in right away. And so, uh, four, 13, <laughs> 13 picks. First one here is the thumbnail pick. That one, two people sent in. Jake Mello sent it in and Bill Courtney sent it in. Uh, Bill already had another pick, and so we're going to credit this one to uh, Jake. And Jake didn't say anything about this one, but uh, Bill he did. He says a full-blown EF9 Civic race car with appropriate colors. Okay, so the EF series of the Civic is gaining in popularity. This was kind of one of the original US, like US JDM tuner cars. Tuner cars were always really popular in Japan for modifying and performance, but this is one of the first ones that brought JDM cars to the wider world, I guess you could say. Still an amazing car. You get the, this is the SIR2 version, so 160 horsepower out of 1.6, with the engine that made the VTEC popular. This one has a full back racing bucket seat. I was uh, talking with somebody the other day who's Japanese and he wanted to know what the English word is for full bucket seat which means a, a, a straight back seat that is not able to recline generally like this it's very tight and used for racing specifically and I, I told him I didn't I didn't know what word we say for those in English. Uh, usually I just say like a racing seat and that's what I told him but uh, maybe I need to educate myself Okay, cool car. It has netting in the windows. I wonder what uh, was done to it. Let's have a look. Oh, let's bring up the interior picture in case somebody wants to see that. There we go. Okay, so it's a 1989 Civic SIR2 1600cc engine. Has been in an accident, so an R grade interior C. Exterior B, 170 to 40 kilometers. Purchase from user. Has a roll cage, tower bar. <coughs> Aftermarket steering wheel, bucket seat or bucket seat or full bucket seat is what they call them in, in Japanese and I told that guy that a bucket seat is basically this style of seat compared to a bench seat because like in old cars they were bench seats and then they moved to bucket seats which is the standalone seat instead of a bench okay uh, aftermarket aluminum wheels adjustable suspension exhaust air um, air conditioning that's kind of a weird thing to write on here power steering because you couldn't some of these came without air conditioning and some of them came without power steering I believe 
I don't know about the SIR2, but I think this generation of Civic you could get with manual steering. Okay, various modifications, so see for yourself for details. There's a lot of uh, marks on here for the accident damage. The right rear side member is dented, end panel dented, left front side member dented. Front cross member has a section that is bent, and various uh, rivets have been put in to repair it. So that kind of sounds a little bit bad to me. But the style is so good. I love the colors of it and the racing livery on it, the white wheels. It is a bit too low by the looks of it, but uh, it's a race car. Uh, oil leak aftermarket hood and um, the catch has been removed. And so I guess only the pins hold it in place. Rear garnish is cracked and uh, rear seat and interior liners and carpets and stuff have been removed. Fenders modified, very scratches and dents. And the body, look at this, is basically perfect except for two cracks on the hood which may mean that the hood has opened itself up, possibly because the latch has been taken out. But if you have cracks right up here, that typically happens when the hood flips itself up while driving. Um, oftentimes, they'll break the windshield from doing that and then crack these sides, depending on which type of car it is. And cracked front bumper and scratch on the windshield, otherwise a perfect body. And so I expect this is going to sell for a lot. The EF9s are really hard to find. The people who have them don't typically want to sell them unless the car is in a really rough condition. And so despite this one being in a pretty heavy accident, I'm going to guess that the sales price of this is going to be quite high. We got a starting price. All these pictures. Starting price of 380,000 yen. I think we're going to see this one go for about a million yen. Okay, on to number two from Elijah MacDonald sent in. Skyline R34, would you look at that? And these cars don't often make the list because most of the people who sell the R34 sell them at the big USS auctions. And we don't do the USS auctions for this video because USS kindly asked us not to do that. And so we complied uh, <laughs> mostly out of necessity uh, for continuing our business. But this person has, uh, has it at KMAA auction. And so, yes, we are allowed to post those or at least we believe that we're allowed to post those on YouTube. It's a 2001 Skyline GTR V-Spec 2. Typically, you're looking at about an extra 1 million yen for the V-Spec 2 compared to the V-Spec or the standard version of it. And with the V-Spec 2, you get this little hood intake, and you get black seats instead of the regular gray ones. And I think you get different settings in this and different four-wheel drive controls. I don't think that there's anything else on the V-Spec 2, except for maybe a deeper spoiler. Last time I thought about this was like a year and a half ago, so bear with me for a sec. If somebody in the comments knows, then please let me know. Purchase from user, alloy wheels, rear spoiler, cute little clouds here from the seller, thank you very much. I do wonder how they write this with the thick pen, because the copy that ends up on the internet here is the carbon copy from the original, but it looks like it was written by felt pen. And so I don't understand how they do that. Aftermarket exhaust, aftermarket suspension. Oh, this is interesting. The engine is a fully built engine from the Nismo Omori factory with serial serialization on it, like a serial number. So that's really cool. Those engines are not cheap. Um, that's the one of the official Nismo factories. I think the biggest one. It's their headquarters. And you can take your car in there for repairs, or you can get the, the full engine. But they don't sell the full engines anymore. And so that time has come. And that engine's probably worth a good amount just by itself. So various original parts uh, are in the car. Whatever is in there is in there, is what they say. Steering wheel wear, seat wear, wheels scratch, rear floor dented, end panel dented. Because um, it's an R grade, looks like it's been a rear accident. Exterior paint fade and peeling, steering wheel peeling. And generally pretty good body. There's a bit of corrosion on this front fender. Big scratches on the lip. Because you don't get very much clearance here. And so 87 to 70 kilometers with the six-speed manual. Of course, it's the only transmission that's in this car. Uh, low mileage. Generally good condition. Accent grade with the special engine in it. Uh, we got a starting price of... Oh, cancelled! Okay, that 77777 means it's cancelled. My guess for a price on this one would probably be around 6.5 million yen. But unfortunately, we won't find out because it's been cancelled. 
Okay, next one from Raymond Yu is kind of like a Skyline. This one I picked specifically because of the engine and because it has really cool two-tone decals on the side that I haven't seen before and looks great with these wheels. These cars are just, they just keep getting better looking and better looking all the time especially for people who love 80s cars and pop-up headlights. But what's really cool about this is, as far as I know, this is the only engine with a top-mount intercooler RB20 engine. And so in the States, we could get the, or States, Canada, most Western countries, countries we could get the <coughs> turbo version of this, but it didn't come with the RB20 engine. It came with a V6 turbo, which you could also get in Japan, but you could get it here with the RB20. Arguably, that's the best engine to get in this because it's going to have the most amount of support for keeping this car alive over the years. The RB20 is uh, a really easy engine to get parts for worldwide, basically, even in the States these days. Okay, so it's 1985, Fairlady Z, 200ZR2. So the ZR2 is the RB20 version. And it is really weird to open up the hood and look at that engine because you don't expect the intercooler to be right on the top there. It's a modifi modified car, auction grade RA because it's been in an accident. Looks like the body's not that great. We have some uneven paint here, crack and uh, scratches here, a big uh, dent and scratch over here, a crack over here, a big dent and some rust over here. Compared to other ones, I would say this is probably an 8 out of 10 in terms of the body, but that's only because your average one has a lot of damage or has rusted away, because for years and years, these were a super cheap car, and not a lot of love for them, and then when they get, when they run out, they become such a special car, and the price gets boosted back up, and that's because there aren't any good ones left. <clears throat> so it's original black two-tone, that's not aftermarket, that's really cool. That's probably the only, like, the most important reason that I would want to buy this car is because of that. Because, like, two-tone paint doesn't hold up that well over time. And this is a 1985, meaning it's pretty old. Okay, to, so it's a two-seater version with a T-bar roof, aftermarket 16-inch wheels, lowered suspension. Um, Kayaba shocks, which is KYB. Uh, Semi-bucket seat for the... Uh, for the passenger, full bucket seat for the driver. Wooden steering wheel you can see there. HKS air filter, R32. Skyline transmission. And that was done, the swap was done and registered on the registration documents. And so it's a registered modified vehicle. And that's why it says modified up here. Um, air cleaner cover and front winker lights are available. I guess they have different black ones in here. Hmm, those wheels look great on this car. I love the black and the chrome with the black and gray two-tone. <clears throat> Condition. General wear and tear by the look of it. Um, most of these circled areas are things that are often uh, on cars. The Probably the worst part is the inside cigarette burn and rip. Front inner panel dented, front cross member dented or bent, core support replaced, exterior paint peeling and various touch-up paint. Uh, folding mirrors don't work. Um, retractable headlights don't work. That's a big problem because that's the that's what I want is retractable headlights in every car. Uh, hood damper doesn't work. Side skirts, uh, side side skirts something. I can't read what that says. I think it says it's cracked. Rear gate modification hole, steering wheel modified, and tail light scratched and some rust and some U3. I already went over that. So price on this one, uh, I think we'll see this one go for about 650,000 yen. Mm, maybe a little bit higher. We used to be able to get them for quite a bit less than that. I'll stay with 650 though. On to this one from, uh, oh, uh, yeah, comment from uh, Ray Yu or Ray Yue on this one. Uh, he just says, Nissan Fairly ZZR2. Mean looking Z is what he said. So I want to uh, I want to say the comments in them from now on because I know we did that in the past and I just think it's a little bit more fun that way. Okay, this one here from Mitchell Dickens and he says an EP3 Type R. And so this is the Type R that doesn't get an awful lot of love because of Honda's decision to move away from the good suspension and to kind of cheapen the car a little bit. But it is still a really good car. I've had the chance to drive one and I think that they're lots of fun except they are understeery, which. If you, I mean, it's not that big of a deal unless you drive like an idiot everywhere. 
um, and you would get used to it, and then it wouldn't be that much of a deal anyway. I don't really care for the looks that much, but I do think that it has a very, very nice engine. I like the seats in it. Uh, the shifter is a weird location. It's a little bit uh, controversial, I guess, but I very much enjoyed driving this much more than most other front-wheel drive cars out there. Prices are really cheap because the EK9 Type R destroys this car on a track, um, and so and possibly because of the styling a little bit too. This is a Euro R, so it's the Euro version of the Civic that was uh, modified to be the Type R. So there is that. Uh, it's a 2003 Civic Type R, auction grade RA. Lots of uh, R grade cars today, it seems. Interior B, exterior B, 146, 542 kilometers, six speed manual, aftermarket Navi, aftermarket parts, uh, aftermarket aero parts, pardon me. Is that right? I guess so. This lip on it? Hmm, I don't know. We've only bought one of these. HID headlights, rear spoiler, Mugen sport suspension. That might help with the understeer. Uh, muffler has been modified and then conditioned here. Interior dirty, scratched seat wear, left front inner panel dented. Seems like a very small accident, so that wouldn't worry me very much. Engine check lamp is on, ABS lamp is on. That doesn't worry me too much for, for me. I know for some people it would. You would probably want to get that fixed before you uh, go to sell the car, if that's your intention. Body is looks super clean, so super clean body. The kilometers here are something that's worth noting. Telephone. At 150,000 kilometers about, that's when the price is usually really low, but if you can find one that's in good condition like this one is, really good body, not very many marks here, and high mileage, you can generally get the car for a really good deal because of that. And so, I personally love cars like this. Like, my van has 130,000 kilometers on it. Our company car has about 130,000 kilometers on it. And uh, the, golf, <laughs> the Golf we bought is 330. I wasn't really going for that. I just saw an R32 Golf and then just said, I have to buy that, so I did. Uh, okay, so price of this one, I think that we'll see this go for about uh, 320,000 yen. Okay, Kevin Mack sent in this one. This one made me laugh big time. Totally Japanese style tuning minivan. Really cool. So we got uh, fender flares on here. They look like fender flares that came off of like a second gen Supra. And then side skirts, big bumper, extra piece on here, top of the windshield piece, and uh, some sort of a rear spoiler here that the amount of downforce you get out of that is questionable. The amount of, I guess, extra air that you get into your front dam here is questionable. The fact that it that air might even go somewhere useful is also questionable. And so this is a Nissan Caravan, also kind of known as the Nissan Homey. Um, Caravan is their van, and then Homey is the uh, wagon version or the uh, civilian version of it. I think this would be a Homey one, but it might be a registered cargo van. Uh, if it has plates, we can find out, but it doesn't. Okay. Two-wheel drive, you can get these in four-wheel drive. Uh, I don't know about ones with the body kit. If you were to buy this, you would really be buying it just for the body kit on this car, not because you wanted a caravan. Like if somebody comes up to me and they say, I want to buy a caravan, this isn't one that I expect them to go ahead and buy. Or people who are looking for something weird would really appreciate this because it definitely is going to get attention. Our A grade, 177, nine, 893 kilometers. It's a 1997, which is weird. That must be must have been one of the last years of this um, this front end, because I think they started that in 1988. Aero parts, camping kit in the car. They don't mention what kind of camping stuff is in it, which is a shame. Oftentimes, the ones that look like this have kind of like one table and then seats all around the table and then that can turn into a bed and it's just like disco balls and lights and stuff in the back it is uh it would be fun if you were to buy this car and then find out what's inside and then be surprised okay so we have rust on the roof here s2 paint peeling a crack here in the side skirt and it's not fitted properly crack here in the front cracks in the back all in the body kit pieces. 
And because it's a simple body kit design with lots of flat sides, it should be pretty easy to repair those cracks if you needed to. Or you can be JDM and you can put in zip ties and then pretend it's a drift damage because rear wheel drive van, you could probably drift it. Okay, looking at condition here, we have front pillar damage from the accident. That's usually a no-no for me, but in most of the ones that we've bought, it hasn't really been a problem. I just don't like the idea of pillar damage. Uh, exhaust uh, side exit modification. There it is. Look at that. I bet this is loud. Oh, 2700cc diesel. Diesel exhaust, it doesn't always sound that good, though. But I wonder about it. Camping kit... Um, it's basically as is. Uh, parts of it don't work. Interior, uh, mod plenty of modifications on there. Uh, the sliding door and what? Left sliding door, steering wheel uh, handle. It has been removed, and so you can't open it. Oh, <laughs> that's a shame. End panel uh, dented. Right rear fender replaced, rear wiper has been taken off. Yeah, it's it has a very small amount, a small group of people that would be willing to buy something like this. And so when it comes to a car like that, it either sells low or high. It almost never sells in the middle of the price range. It sells low because people don't like these cars to sell unless they're looking for somebody who is like, oh my god, I have to have that. And those types of people are willing to pay more, and so if that type of person sees this at auction and they're looking for themselves, or they have a market for that type of vehicle, then the price could be high. But I'm going to guess a low price because it's more likely the, um, the first of those two things, especially not knowing what the camping stuff is. And so I'm going to guess this one will go for 250,000 yen. Okay, the next one from Leslie Lee. And we have 11. So this is what the 8.6 eventually turned into. This is the final generation of it. And after the 8.6, everybody knows it turned to front wheel drive. This is front wheel drive, two door sports coupe, small with a six speed manual. And the last version of the 4AGE engine. And so this would be the black top and the AE111. The blacktop engine is really cool. Toyota said it put out like 165 horsepower, I think. But then if you actually do a dyno, it's more like 148 or something like that. But still, it's a cool engine because they, like, I think it has like, uh, like, the valves are filled with sodium or something. And titanium parts in the head. Like rockers are made out of titanium. And so it allows the engine to rev really quickly. And so it's kind of a fun engine in that respect. It also has individual throttle bodies, which I love. And a cool shifter. Going over the sheet here, it's a 1996 Corolla 11 1600cc engine, auction grade R, interior C. Shanghai muffler spoiler. And I was joking about this before the video. I don't know what a muffler spoiler is, but that would be really cool if they had a little GT wing attached to the muffler there. Twin cam engine, Recaro seat, six speed, TRD timing belt change. I don't, I mean, that's all in English. I guess I didn't have to read it, but I don't know what the TRD means. I don't think this is a TRD version of the car. I don't think that they made one. Um, the six speed manual is stock. I don't think that the six speed manual is a TRD unit, but it could be. You would think that it would be more modified. I see a TRD sticker on the back, but typically when you buy TRD parts, then you get a sticker with it. So I don't think that that uh, necessarily means this is a TRD version of the car. Okay, so aftermarket, sh oh, um, where are we at? 85 220 kilometers. The engine's fairly reliable, I would guess. Sp uh, holes in the back from a spoiler removal here. Body otherwise is really good. Core support and left front inner panel dented, accident damaged, uh, accident repaired car. Uh, small accident it seems like and so I wouldn't be too worried about that audio has been removed winter tires jack and tools are missing wheel scratched and body scratches and dents so it looks like a good condition car these are sought after as racing cars for smaller circuits because they actually perform really well for a front wheel drive car and uh, they cost less than the rear wheel drive cars which are bought up by drifters and are running out and so because of that you can get a good race car for cheap and if anything breaks, you can get shells and engines and stuff like that fairly easily. 
parts are still relatively available. And so I will say, what do we got for starting price here? 50,000 yen. I will say that this one is going to be, I'm thinking here, 450,000 yen. Okay, on to the next one. This one sent in from Ioanni. I picked this one and I'm only gonna go over it briefly because there's only one reason why I picked this one, but it is a Mark II, which is a great car, but this one here is the pedestrian version, not the sports car turbo version. And so it's not really that amazing. It is rear wheel drive, but the cool thing is, look at this, 573,000 kilometers and 2.4 liter diesel engine. So for those who don't know, you can get a diesel Mark II. A lot of diesel cars existed in the 70s and 80s and 90s in Japan, but since they passed the regulations not allowing these types of cars to be registered in major cities of Tokyo, Yokohama, Kawasaki, um, not so many diesel cars anymore. And so it is cool to have a rear wheel drive diesel JDM car. The mileage is high, so I don't know, that could mean that the car has proven itself and has been well maintained, or it could mean that it's ready to die. So usually nobody's willing to pay on that risk. S1 on the roof, S1 and C1 over here, that's rust and corrosion. Dent, a big dent over here, medium dent here, a crack in the tail light in the back. Very unique. Um, condition doesn't seem that bad for that high of mileage. Maybe it was used as like a shuttle for a, a company just uh, to and from the airport or something like that. Starts at 10,000 yen. Uh, I think that because of the super high mileage, we won't see any higher than about scrap price for this, which for this car may be somewhere around 80,000 yen. So that's gonna be my pick for the price, 80,000 yen. Okay, on to the next one. Thank you, Yoani, for sending that one in. Olva Sahinoja, sorry for the pronunciation says uh, this is kind of like a turbo Celica station wagon and he is right because it is exactly like that except this version of the engine is better than the version of the engine that was in the Celica because these ones were made for longer this is a 2003 and the 3s engine in the Celica I think ended in 2001 and then this car got the next version of that engine which was only ever made in this car it is a shame that this car was only ever made with uh, automatic transmissions. I would be interested to see how difficult it is to put the Celica's engine into this because everything else I think kind of matches. This is called a GT4 just like the Celica. It runs a four-wheel drive system that is full-time four-wheel drive just like the Celica. So you may be able to change that transmission. It's a 2003 Caldina GT4, auction grade four with an interior seat. 67, 676 kilometers, keyless entry, toll collection box, HID headlights, um, back and front monitors, okay, leather steering wheel, and then looking at here, there's animal hair in the car, which in my experience hasn't been a big problem, it's always been fairly slight, like cat hair, uh, front wheels scratched, interior scratched and dirty, wheels scratched, and... Uh, door mirrors scratch. Body looks to be quite good except for scuffs on the front bumper at the corners here and here and the left rear corner and dent over here. I think these are one of the best looking station wagons especially with the hood scoop on here and the turbo engine. I think the package all together is just awesome and part of the reason I love this so much is I drove this car in Gran Turismo 3 as one of my first four-wheel drive cars because they were generally cheap cars in that or maybe I got it given to me as a present I don't know uh yeah cool car I think prices are good for them too gas mileage is going to suck because it's a, an engine that was made from 1986 and just kind of band-aided together it is a cool engine but compared to today's engines it's not as efficient and not as good at uh, gas mileage and then four-wheel drive you see the extra weight and the extra drivetrain resistance Okay, so uh, price, we're looking, oh, this is also an ST, just like the Sleek is an ST205, ST246, so they share the same chassis designation. 
Okay, uh, low mileage. Uh, I think that we'll see this probably go for about 330,000 yen. Is my guess on it. Okay, so we got another one, two, three, four, five more to go through here. And so this one here, kind of the same car as the last one actually. A station wagon, four wheel drive, turbo car. And so this one or this one. And I know which one that the market prefers because this one you can get with manual transmission, but even the automatic versions of these are well more expensive than the Caldinas. And so I think these are special because they only made them for one generation, the Evo 9. And just the fact that they made these at all is awesome. They have the Evo 9 uh, front bumper. This one has the hood vent on them, but they also make these without the hood, hood vent in them. I think that all the automatic ones didn't have the hood vent. And I think that's only on the manual transmission ones, but I could be wrong. I think the wheels look really good on this car and the fender flares together with the station wagon body is just really good look and so if I had the money this is a car I would like to have as a personal car but I don't have enough to to own one of these sadly it's a 2006 Lancer what is this called Lancer Evolution Wagon so no special name just Lancer Evolution Wagon GTI Evolution oh Oh, it's not GTI, okay. So I'm just getting confused here. It doesn't say GTI <laughs> Evolution. <laughs> it says GT Evolution. That's not an I. <laughs> okay, 127 0, 060 kilometer, six speed manual purchase from user aftermarket Navi. Six speed manual, it says again. Uh, aftermarket 18 inch wheels, four wheel drive, Momo steering wheel, Recaro seats. The seats in this aren't as good as the Evo seats, the regular Evo seats, not as high bolstered, kind of a cheaper seat but that's life. Extra gauges in it, really? I don't see them. Oh, here it is, up here on the pillar. Aftermarket exhaust. Mm, Brembo calipers. Original 17 inch wheels, HID, toll collection box, aftermarket suspension. Windshield rock chip, steering wheel wear. All this is the regular stuff. Cigarette burn inside and panel dented underside surface rust. And the body, I would give that a six and a half out of ten, or a seven out of ten, probably. Nothing major, but there are a lot of minor marks. Okay, uh, maybe seven and a half. Hmm. All right, so being a six-speed with the 127, that's kind of high enough that the price will stay down. It does have current registration on it, though. You can see the Japanese plate on there. Uh, starting price three hundred thousand. Uh, I don't really know the prices of these ones very well because we don't have that many customers for them. And we, the only ones we've ever sold were autos. So I think, I think we'll see this one around 1.2 million yen. Okay, next one here. This one might have been my favorite one sent in by Bill Courtney. It is a Nissan Gloria that looks very much like old American cars. And so it's a 1970 so basically a 60s car with the brownish gold paint, the bench seat, the shag carpet. It's just such a nice looking vehicle. It's not in good condition because it's old and hasn't been maintained completely, but I do love it very much. And that's basically all there is to say about this one. Uh, mileage is unknown because the odometer is five digits because back then they didn't expect cars to be able to go more than 100,000 clicks. The body has a lot of rust. See all the C and the S here? C1, S2, C2. It's an auction grade three most likely because of the rust and interior and exterior are both D. Comes with a 2000 cc gasoline engine and I believe the Gloria only had an inline six cylinder and so this is probably the L24 engine in here which is the same as the Fair Lady in Japan had the uh, 2.4 and the 2.0. Oh, pardon me, I said L24, I meant L20. Uh, so the L20 is the 2 liter and L24 is the 2.4. That's easy. Underside surface rust and corrosion. Um, spare tire. Uh, I can't read this one, I'm sorry. Various uh, surface rust, various corrosion, and some repair marks from corrosion repair. Door mirror and fender door mirrors on the fenders and they don't know if that's a modification or not various aftermarket parts on it um, 
I think it says here that the front interior parts have been swapped. Oil leak. I don't know. This, uh, ha this sheet has enough that I can't read that it would be one that I pass on to our lovely Naoko to translate. Column shift four-speed manual. Crazy. Okay, don't really know the price of these. I don't think that they're highly sought after. And so in this condition, in order to give some room after restoring it, in order to make a profit, you'd have to buy it for pretty cheap. So I think that 250000 is what we'll see this one go for. And only that high because if you want one of these, you can't really find them. And for some people, they will need this car. There's going to be very few of them that need this car, but some people do. It's maybe their, the car that they got married in back 40 years ago. And then they want to get another one just because they're super old now. Don't know. I, was, I wasn't around back then. I was uh, minus 12 years old at that time. Okay, on to the next one. Thanks, Bill, for sending that one. Next one, uh, Raymond Liang sent in this bad boy. And, uh, yeah, known as the world's ugliest car. Has the extra, extra headlights. Kind of like uh, uh, the car fell into a vat of toxic waste and just grew an extra set of headlights. But look at this. Five-speed manual. Dashboard five-speed manual. What does that mean exactly? I guess. <laughs> just like the Civic, I don't know how comfortable I would be shifting this. Weird. The interior is just as ugly as the exterior, too. It's, it's so weird that, like... They thought, like, this had to pass the the okay of so many people in Fiat before it was made. And things like this make me question how much, the like, the people in, in the company are just yes men. They go, one person says yes, and everyone says, well, if I, if I like my job, I have to agree with everything that they say. It is a cool vehicle. You get a lot of room inside it, uh, the, lots of visibility, and you're going to be looked at all the time. The hood emblem is right next to the windshield. That's weird. Uh, 50,080 kilometers. I bet these are really rare with the five-speed. I bet you 95% of them were sold with autos, and these weren't cars that a lot of people bought because of this, because of what they look like. I want one though, especially with the five speed dashboard mounted shifter. Sorry for the person who's calling right now. Everybody's on lunch at the moment. Uh, oil leak airbag lamp is on. Left front door can't open. Door knob, door handle is cracked. Can't open from the outside. Wheel scratched, door mirror scratched, various scratches and dents. Some damage here on the side and otherwise okay body. Low mileage, ugly car, maybe 300,000 yen? I don't know. That person who's calling is letting it ring an awful lot. Hmm. Well, two more minutes and lunch is over, so. Okay, so this one here is sent in by BanPay.net. He is a youtuber so you can check out his videos he doesn't have very many subscribers but his content is fun and i like watching it and so if you want to go check him out please do uh there are a lot of users on youtube that don't have very many subs and yet their content is really good it's just the the way youtube is and so uh art is the guy's name he says would be lovely tofu delivery chaser Oh, and Raymond for the last one said, even in the country full of weird cars, you can still find this car with a five-speed manual in reference to this one. But uh, Art wanted to send this one in. You can deliver tofu in it if you want. Looks like it's, uh, it, it looks great. The two-tone paint is really nice. The wheels are good. The kind of modified 70s Japanese look on it. And uh, rear spoiler like the uh, Skyline style skyline gtr style c10 wooden steering wheel nice plush seats this looks like a cool car and so this is a 1986 chaser avante with a two liter engine chaser i also think was only a six cylinder model and so a two liter inline six is probably a one g g e with no turbo is my guess and so it's an inline twin cam six cylinder uh, so let's see what the sheet says. Octary 3.5, interior C. The body on it looks really good. 
That's been restored. Cool. That's the same person. Sorry. 160, 193 kilometers, 5-speed manual, exhaust header, SSR 15-inch wheels, front adjustable suspension, rear lowering springs. That's out of necessity. A lot of Toyota 80s cars were like that. Twin cam engine. Front window rock chip, interior scratch, dirty cigarette burn, wear, and rip. Aftermarket steering wheel and shift knob, dashboard has cracks in it, 5 centimeters worth. Seat cigarette burn and passenger seat has a repair mark on it. Door trim has paint fa uh, color fade. Door mirror covers paint peeling. Underside scuff scratched and one part dented. Exterior has uh, some part has been color changed. So originally it was probably just white. And so they put on the extra black here, which looks quite good. And the black on the hood. Left and right baffle dented and rust. Modifications done to them with question mark. Wheel scratch, very scratches and dents, aftermarket exhaust. And so, if it is the engine I'm thinking that it is, and we could check that if you needed us to, uh, that's a fairly modern engine that would be easy to maintain still, I believe. Like the Soarer came with that engine. And uh, I think that it's just a great car. Very good looking. Very cool on the inside. Different from everything else. And uh, it would be awesome if we got a chance to buy this one. Especially with the five-speed manual. That is a cool car. Starts at 30,000 yen. This is another of those cars, if somebody finds it and falls in love, we're going to see a high price. But otherwise, it would be generally pretty low compared to the market for cars that are importable to the USA at the moment. I would say that, uh, I mean, my range for this one is anywhere from 300,000 to a million. Is, is my range. But because I only pick a single price for my, my uh, one price guess... I'm going to say on this, we'll probably see it for about 620,000 yen. And on to the last one from Redneck Hunter. He says, four-wheel drive 80s Mazda hatch. And if you know what it is, try to think about it right now before I click. Ta-da! It's Mazda Familia, four-wheel drive GTX, and uses a turbocharged 1.6-liter engine in it. And this is the same engine that is in, like, the Ford Laser and, like, one other weird American car. Because Mazda and Ford were kind of buddies back then. Um, so, yeah, turbo four-wheel drive rally car. These were actually rally cars. They made a homologation special version of it. Most people know about the GTX, the next generation after this. And this is, is a Mazda 323. Basically, that's what the Familia is. <clears throat> so five-speed manual with the four-wheel drive. The engine puts out 140 horsepower, so it's going to be pretty quick. I don't know how much these weigh. I looked up the front-wheel drive one is 930 kilos, and then add in the four-wheel drive weight, so you're probably somewhere around 1,000 kilos or just a bit above. So 140 horsepower with 1,000 kilos is going to be fast. Even by today's standards, that's going to be a quick car. Look at the uh, Infinity badge in the back. I wonder if this was uh, branded as... Oh, I, hmm. That's, I think, NK is the Infinity. I don't know. But these wheels don't look like NK. They look kind of like stock wheels. <clears throat> but they are a turbofan design, and so that's meant to pull the air out from the brakes when the wheel spins. But the, the, like, the benefit to that is kind of questionable. They don't really use that on cars these days anymore. Cool spoiler on the back. Cool silver paint. I really love 80s silver paint because it looks nothing like the silver paint that we have now. It doesn't have the high metallic content. It's just kind of shimmery metallic. I really like that. I think it's uh, very definitive of the 80s. So it's a 1985 Familia GTX, Octavate RA, interior B, exterior B, exterior is B minus, 65, 5, 18 kilometers. This would be a great car to bring in for stock because uh, fun cars that not many people know about. I think are going to attract attention. And even if they don't buy this, they would still remember your shop more and possibly buy something else. You may get people sharing on, on social media, this kind of thing. And so, yeah, I think this would be a good one to buy for the U.S. at the moment. Uh, various modifications to the interior, it says. Uh, this is a dealer trade-in. It has no reserve on it. That's weird. So starting price zero and no reserve. Could you imagine if just like nobody else bid on it and you could get this for 10 bucks? 
That's not going to happen, though. Front inner panel bent, um, dented, bent. Basically, it's been repaired, but you can still kind of see a little bit of, of something. Core support one part, same thing. Uh, oil leak, dashboard glue marks, rear spoiler. Uh, what's this? I know that one. Ugh. Um, I'm not going to guess. Uh, exterior paint fade and paint peeling, underside surface rust, corrosion, and painted rear hatch damper uh, needs to be replaced. Aftermarket steering wheel peeling, headliner is uh, dirty and battery needs to be replaced. Wheel scratch, various scratches and dents, and peeling paint on this front fender, uneven paint on this side. I would love this to have this car. This is kind of like a close to the same level performance wise as the Honda City Turbo 2 much much lower in terms of recognizability and and uh, value because of the mark and the brand and the type of car it is but performance wise it's going to be pretty similar and i think the price would be much less for one of these than a honda city turbo 2 i think it, this is a great car i would absolutely love to at least to drive this around sunroof on it this is awesome let's look at the interior oh so 80s and boxy mm, that's good Okay, so price-wise, yeah, uh, I, I know I keep saying this, but it's true. I can't really guess a price for this one. It's, it's going to be too hard to say. If I were bidding on this one for my inventory, I would go up to 500,000 yen on it, but I don't know if that would be enough to secure it. I could see it going for higher than that. So I'm going to guess on this that we'll see 650,000 yen. Somebody's going to buy it. Cool car. I don't know if these were made in the States, too. I kind of got conflicting information when I looked it up before I shot this video. Okay, so that is the last one. That was, this was an extra long one because I couldn't make up my mind which vehicles to show. So we're at 45 minutes of me plus Andrew's part, and so we're almost at 50 minutes. So sorry, everybody, that it took so long. And do remember to tell me if you like the longer ones or not because uh, for us it's a lot easier to do the shorter ones because I'm always super busy. But if, if it's going to make a... A big impact if people are going to watch it then uh, it's good advertising for our company and so all right so see you guys next week bye bye